Professor Mobley, you said, I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to paraphrase you, that, that um, this is not the system we would create <clears throat> if we were creating a system from scratch. Briefly, can you outline the system we would create if we were creating one from scratch? Well, I think what the current system demonstrates is that these narrow <clears throat> ad hoc protections uh, serve to define whistleblowers out of protection, um, that agencies at least and courts also focus on these kind of boundary issues so that we never get to the claim of whether someone was retaliated against. The courts and agencies spend a lot of time focusing on is this the right type of employee, did they make the right type of disclosure, uh, did they do it in the right way, did they tell the right person. So the first thing you'd have to do is, I think, broaden those definitions so that they don't become landmines for whistleblowers and they actually provide true encouragement. So broader overall protections. Uh, I think an easy and very helpful solution would be to increase statute of limitations for these provisions across the board. Um, the various numbers from three, 30 days to 300 days um, I think are uh, potentially disastrous for employees and uh, a longer statute of limitations purposes I think would serve, uh, longer statute of limitations period would serve the purposes a little better. And I think there could be more transparency in the process. Um, I had to file a Freedom of Information Act request just to get decision letters from OSHA to find out what happened on these cases, and those could be made more available. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Chin, um, I know you were taking notes, but could, could you comment on Professor Mobley's uh, very you know, brief outline of, of a system that we would create from scratch, what your assessment of it would be? Uh, I'd be happy to do that, Congressman Bishop. Uh, <clears throat> with respect to, well, first of all, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what's being proposed. Uh, Definition should be broadened. I'm not sure in, on a statute by statute basis, or is Professor Moberly proposing some sort of unified whistleblower protection? L act? Let's assume that he's proposing a unified whistleblower protection. Okay. Well, with that assumption in mind, I, I think that that's sort of that that's a very radical proposal, and would be something akin to, in terms of scope, to the enactment of Title VII. And if, if you're going to make that sort of step, it seems to me that there would be some sort of findings necessary before you would, would go to that, as opposed to anecdotal horrors, which can be matched. I assure you, Congressman, which anec with anecdotal horrors of meritless cases taking up uh, tremendous sums of money or people misusing the statutes for protection, even in the two-thirds of the times seen by Mr. Devine, if we're going to now federalize and nationalize a whistleblower protection program that would protect everyone who, in any job, who complains about anything, uh, I think that would be a recipe for chaos. And it would ignore the carefully targeted drafted legislation that exists today, and it would also uh, ignore the state protections that exist on a state-by-state -state basis throughout the but country. Is it, I mean, I, I, I'm sure you don't agree with this, but the, the carefully targeted legislation that you describe is legislation that has failed to protect people. So either there is something wrong with the way it has been crafted or there is something wrong with the way it is administered. I feel that it's necessary to uh, respond to a, a few of Mr. Chin's comments because he said this would be a very radical proposal. Well, you know, I thought freedom of speech is what defined our country. This is freedom of speech where it counts. Um, radical to whom? Uh, second, he said that having a, a national law with a um, consistent, coherent set of rights would be um, bad policy. Quite frankly, um, coherence replacing chaos, um, I think it's good policy. I think that objection flunks the laugh test. Uh, and third, um, he said that, well, we shouldn't do this because some people might abuse their rights. Uh, well, in that case, I guess we should cancel all our rights because they can all be abused. And if we're talking about the cost, let's weigh the cost of frivolous lawsuits to the cost for society when a corporation uh, abuses its power. And if the, the view of the corporate sector is we need to make a record of the full extent of um, uh, the price that society has paid for corporate abuses of power, um, I say let's get started.